Hello, Rick here on Certified Bleeding Game. Now, I thought I'd just do a quick video on the Spore Drive, how it works, and where it potentially may lead to the series if one of my crazy theories actually is true. Now, Star Trek veterans are probably going to realise that something has to happen with the Spore Drive. It has to not function, or something has to go wrong with it, because it's not present in things like TOS and TNG, and with such an amazing ability to navigate vast distances in such a short space of time, the Federation wouldn't just stop using it without a reason. Starfleet's always pursuing faster than warp travel, with the transwarp projects, transwarp corridors, conduits, and the quantum slipstream drive, to name a few. Though not all Starfleet by design, Starfleet routinely pursues any avenue that could lead to such technologies. So why wouldn't they continue their research into the spore drive by the time of TNG, or even earlier at TOS? Despite the varying levels of Star Trek Discovery's continuity, this is one issue that is just too big to completely ignore. So let's look at how it works, as explained by Stamets in the last episode. So the mushrooms... Prototaxites stellabiatori. Right, well I'm calling them mushrooms, are formed of a weird biological material that exists both in our plane of existence as well as beyond subspace, or in a pocket dimension as he calls it. Just like real life mushrooms, their roots, their mycelium, extends far beyond what we can see with our eyes. Just as it expands below the ground in the dirt, the mycelium network expands across all of subspace, covering vast distances. So the fungal growths that we see, the things that produce the spores, are in fact, in essence, the tip of the iceberg. The physical manifestation of this big subspace mycelium protruding into our realm. The spores they produce are effectively their seeds, and they have the same subspace properties. Technically, yes, they're not seeds, but they serve a similar function. They float around in our plane of reality, being carried from place to place by the clothing of unwitting crewmen, or more likely, the symbiotic relationship they share with the tardigrades allows them to spread their spores to other parts of the galaxy. Speaking of giant tardigrades, this creature does rely rather heavily on the mycelium spores. It goes so far as to actually incorporate DNA from the spores into its own genome, thus allowing it to tap in to the mycelium network. This allows it to gain a sort of understanding and sight of this network. Then, accumulating energy from subspace, it then punctures a hole in our reality and zips off, reappearing instantaneously, or seemingly, at the other end of its chosen mycelium tendril. This is the process that Stamets was attempting to recreate using the Discovery. A biological component is needed to navigate the mycelium web, however. Whether it's the tardigrade or a human with the same ability doesn't seem to matter, but software just can't cut it. This suggests that it requires something beyond simple computing power. As short jumps with the discovery were possible, but eventually it couldn't hack it, it couldn't go far enough. So perhaps, as fairy tale as this sounds, you need to more feel your way through, rather than plot it. Anyway, the point being that by the time you get down to the quantum level, as Stamet says, there is no difference between biology or physics. It's all the same in the quantum realm. After all, this is the very fabric of the universe, this is where the laws are made. And perhaps... remade? No, I'm not a quantum physicist, I'd be tackling far bigger problems if I was. But it strikes me that when you start messing around with the very laws and the nature of the universe at this level, weird things can potentially happen. I've stated this before in one of my Star Trek Discovery review videos. But now that we know for certain that we're getting a mirror episode up ahead, and with that lingering mirror image of Stamets in the mirror, real or not, we're seeing that repercussions can't be too far away. Of course, he may have just gone nuts from the tardigrade juice he injected himself with. But what's the betting the Mirror Universe episode that's up and coming is caused by the Discovery miscalculating and making a bad jump with the Spore Drive? If this is the case, then the Spore Drive can clearly manipulate reality and alternate realities as well, allowing travel between them and so forth. So here's the completely nuts part of my theory. What if all this meddling at the quantum level is inevitably what changes the universe? We know there are a lot of continuity issues with Discovery. Some could be avoided, some couldn't because of licensing issues, but whatever. But what if Starfleet's abandonment of the Spore Drive project is because they irrevocably alter their own existence, their own reality. Spock never talks about Michael Burnham in the original series. Now, she could obviously be retconned in, but what if that's because she ceases to exist by the end of the series? Perhaps the events of the Discovery are so unrecognisable in places because they're meant to be. Now, there's been rumours circulating for a while, I don't know if there's any verification to them or not, about how Sarek is going to be a linchpin of this sort of thing. Uh, something to do with 
duplicates of him being spread throughout the Star Trek universe. In real life, of course, it's just because the same actor played multiple parts, but still a compelling idea. I think so anyway. But yeah, in short and to reiterate, weird things happen when you start screwing with the laws of the universe, and perhaps Star Trek Discovery's spore drive gets dumped because it's just too dangerous to use, they can't predict the results of what's going to happen. By the time the series is done, we could be left in a world resembling more akin to the original series that fans are used to. Though I do think anything of this sort of change would be addressed rather ambiguously, with a sort of, ooh, who knows what else we might have changed approach to it. Of course, I could just be attempting to fanboy this all together in my head and rope it all into one neat tidy package, which of course is never going to happen, but hey ho, that's just a random idea that I came up with. Thought I'd share it here, get some feedback, see what you guys think. So, I'll see you again in the next Star Trek Discovery video. Thanks again for watching, I've been Rick, this is Certifiably In Game, and until next time, goodbye.